Hey guys, it's Matt Catling here for your mini accelerator. Uh, we're having a bit of a chat at the moment with Alison and what we're looking at is a paralysis when it comes to execution around her mastermind group. And I thought I'd record this little session for you because it could be really, really useful, um, especially for the people that are doing our NLP accelerator uh, training at the moment, because we do look at strategy work. And that's what we want to look at, right? Is there is a recipe for everything that we do. There's a recipe for love. There's a recipe for joy, happiness, but there is also a recipe for paralysis. So, um, Alison, thank you for having this chat and being such a great example. Okay. So, tell me, what is the problem? Meta model guys, what is the problem? Well, I just had, I've got, got all my stuff ready for my masterclass, but when it came to actually doing it, I just froze. And I think it's mm -hmm. just because the process of not knowing, not knowing the steps properly, I guess. And mm -hmm. yeah, just um, yeah, the fear of the fear of it, I guess, just doing doing it. <laughs> yeah, notice if we notice eye patterns right now, you went up into construction, so yeah. the top right hand side. So that's constructing a picture. You're constructing a picture right now. What is mm. that picture of? As you think of that paralysis. You're creating a picture. Yeah. What is that? Um, making a, a fool of myself, I guess. <laughs> mm. So you're going out into the future and imagining that you're making a fool of yourself. Yeah. Uh huh. And as you as you think of that, do you have a picture? Yeah. What do you see? Tell me what you see. I think um, I'm because I've been more of a listener and not a a, a speaker. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's the fear is, um, mm -hmm. the fear of, you know, speaking. So, as you think of this, do you have a picture? Because you keep going up to your visual. Do okay. you have a picture? Yeah. Yeah. Is it a past event that you're recalling? What, what's happening here as you think of this? Um, or are you going out into the future and imagining the worst case? What's happening here? I think it's. Probably because I haven't been allowed to speak up, I guess. Mm, past. So notice mm. that. Take a deep breath in and out. Notice that belief. I haven't been allowed. Well, who didn't allow you? Well, a few people in my life. Mm, I haven't been allowed? Yeah. So you'll notice well, we're missing so much information. I haven't been allowed. Hmm, that's an interesting belief, isn't it? Mm hmm. Because mm. we kind of speak all day, don't we? Yeah. I like you do, correct? Yeah. Mm. So no one can really. Hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, I, I suppose it put it this way when I did speak up, I was spoken over all the time. Mm. All yeah. the time? Not all the time. Well, oh, uh, so, okay, not all the time. Okay. A cool. lot of time. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. So you chose to believe in this belief system that I'm not allowed to speak. Mm hmm Yeah. Or I haven't been allowed to speak. Now, we know that that's false, correct? Yeah. Mm. Cool. And so when you think of I haven't been allowed to speak, what comes up for you? Um. Well, I was shut down quite a lot, so. Um, well, so let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. What if you did speak? Could be really Which, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We, you kind of do it every day, correct? Yeah. And now let me ask you this question. Imagine, imagine you overcame the solution to this problem. Yeah, be good. Well, just think about it. Imagine you overcame the actual solution to the problem. Like you overcame the actual solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's not the problem. What is the problem? <laughs> Speaking up. Mm. And how's it actually not a problem? When I do speak up. Mm, you kind of speak up every day, correct? Yeah. Mm. A lot more than over. And it's kind of to. like, mm. yeah, it's it's kind of like no different, is it? Like the process of speaking is exactly the same whether you walk in and ask for a coffee. 
Yeah. Like the process is actually the same, correct? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So now just think of your business right now and you're mm. getting out there and speaking. So just go out into the future, imagine it, and just notice how you feel now. A little bit scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now tell me about that 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 scary part. What part of your body do you notice it in? Um, in my stomach. So we're going straight up again, straight up, and you're creating a picture. Just think of that again as you think of that kind of fear in your stomach. <clears throat> Am I also getting stuff in my throat? Yeah. So it's yeah. So it starts in your stomach, feeling powerless, yeah. and it goes into your throat. Okay. Yeah. So here we have like the strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So as you think of like feeling powerless in your stomach when it comes to speaking or fear, do you have a picture? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Is it black and white or colour? Colour. Is it moving or still? Still. Is it focused or defocused? Focused. Are you looking through your own eyes or can you see yourself in the picture? I can see myself in the picture. Uh-huh. Excellent. And are there any sounds that are important? No. Mm-hmm. And you can feel those feelings of in your stomach and your throat, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any tastes or smells? No. Okay, cool. So what I want you to do is just float into your body now, look through your eyes. And as you do that, as you're in your body looking through your eyes, I want you to take a deep breath in and out. And just notice how you feel now as you're inside of your body looking through your eyes. See what you would see, hear what you would hear and feel. And just notice, how do you feel? Like calm. Awesome. And so I, I want you to just put that picture aside now of you in your body and just put it at kind of like, you know, just in the background. Mm -hmm. Just hold on to that. Like take a snapshot of it. Yep. And now what I want you to do is just think of how you'd like to be instead. And as you think of how you'd really like to be instead, do you have a picture? Yeah. Yeah. And just make it really colourful. Mm -hmm. And make sure you like you can see yourself in a picture. Can you do that? Yeah. And just turn the sound up as much as you can. And just notice the feelings. What are the feelings that are switching on right now? Yeah. What are they? Just feeling confident and powerful. Yeah, just really switch that on, like double the intensity. Yeah. Yeah, and just know, you know, when you really love doing something and you're really excited about it, you can't wait to do it. It's so exciting. Just kind of switch that feeling on. And now just imagine the impact that you're making and you can just really see it and it's mm -hmm. just flowing. It's easy. Have you ever had, had that experience where you are so excited to do something? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, let me add it. You want to run towards it. Just really create that intensity and just take a snapshot of that picture. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah, take a deep breath in and out. See the, sen the sensory acuity, guys? See the body language shift that's happening right now? Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring that back that picture. So float back into the old picture that you're in your body. You know, like, oh, I'm feeling powerless and, and there's, you know, I can't speak. I'm paralyzed. So you're in your body looking through your eyes. Can you bring those feelings back? Can you bring yeah. that picture back that we put? Yeah, great. Yeah. Down the bottom left, bottom, bottom left-hand corner. Of your screen, I want you to imagine that desired state that we just looked at where you were really excited. So it's kind of small in the bottom left-hand corner. Mm -hmm. And then on the count of three, we're going to explode it over the top. Ready? So yep. ready? One, two, three, and switch. Have it explode big and bright over the top. See yourself in the picture and just notice that intensity. You're excited and you can see yourself in the picture making an impact. Okay? And that's that excitement. I can't wait to do this. Let me there. And you can see the impact that you're making. Clear the screen. Okay, clear the screen completely. Take a deep breath in and out. Now, see if you can bring back that old picture. Shut your eyes. Bring back that old picture You're in your body. But bottom left-hand corner, you can see that desired state. Ready? One, two, three, and swish. Bring it. Explode it over the top. See yourself in the picture. The intensity, okay? Yeah. And clear the screen. Clear the screen. Take a deep breath in and out. Now, see if you can bring back that old picture. So, like, you're in your body, bottom left-hand corner, desired state. One, two, three, swish. Big and bright over the top. See yourself. Make it colourful, 
and hear it, hear it, hear your voice inside. Take a deep breath in now and clear the screen. Now we're going to do it a bit quicker. See if you can bring back the old one. You're in your body looking through your eyes, bottom left-hand corner, desired state, ready, one, two, three, and switch. Make it big and bright over the top. Clear the screen. Now bring back the old picture. You're in your body, bottom left-hand corner, desired state, one, two, three, and switch. Make it big and bright over the top. That's it. Clear the screen, blank it out. Ready, let's bring it back. So you're in your body again. Desired state, bottom left-hand corner, one, two, three, and switch. Big and bright over the top. See yourself making an impact. You're excited. Okay, clear the screen. Now, if you can bring back the old one, I don't even think you can at the moment, but let's see if we can. Bring back the old one in your body, bottom left-hand corner, desired state, one, two, three, and switch. Big and bright over the top. Make it intense and see yourself making an impact. And now what I want you to do is go out into the future and notice it's expanding. These things compound. Have you ever had that experience where you're excited to do something and you start to see progress? It becomes mm -hmm. almost addictive. Just yeah. see that. Okay, so go out kind of a week in the future, see what's happening. Go out a month in the future, see what's happening. And it's like this snowball that's rolling down the mountain to that point where you cannot wait. You're so excited to get out there and share a message. It's almost addictive. Notice that. Now go out 12 months in the future. Notice the audience is growing. You love it. You really, really love it. And notice this. It's like what's happening is, is that there is no preparation. You love making a mess, okay? And you'll notice yeah. the best presentations are those ones when you're just in present time, when you it's not perfect. That's when you really connect with an audience. Just see that and notice that. And you've got all the resources to be able to handle whatever comes up and you're so excited see that. Now go out two years in the future, notice who you've become. Notice the certainty, notice the knowledge, notice the impact and just hold on to that picture now. Okay. And now come back to now, take a deep breath in and now. How are you feeling? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Confident Ooh. and powerful. <laughs> awesome. Mm. Do you know, like the greatest presentations are the ones that are kind of unplanned. Have you been seeing what's happening guys on the, in the marketplace at the moment? is like the ones, the perfect presentations, we've got the lighting, all the editing, all of that stuff, they're not working. It's the ones that you think you've really stuffed up are the ones that are really connecting. Because the most important thing is just being authentic. Mm. Mm. Yep. So right. Yeah. So make a mess like troublemakers. We make a mess as fast as possible and we'll get someone else to clean it up later. But the most important thing is almost like when we're present, we stop making it about ourselves right and we start to just see the audience and we go, I'm here to make that impact. Yeah, I'm certainly making a mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good, good. So now think of um, now think of doing a masterclass now. Mm -hmm. And as you think of doing a masterclass, how do you feel? A lot more confident. Yeah. Can everyone see that shift there? How good is that? Yeah. Awesome. Now, what would have to happen for you to be really excited to do that masterclass like every week or every fortnight and to really just show people the magic? What would have to happen? I'd have to set a date. To yeah. Do it. There we go. So that's your next big thing, set a mm. date. Yeah. But think of those things that you love doing. Like you're really interested in health. Yeah. You're really interested in helping women. Yeah. You're really interested in helping mothers. Mm -hmm. And just think of that, that aspect of what really drives you to see that breakthrough where a mother is able to actually sleep a full night. Yeah. Yeah. And is awesome. actually, yeah, mm -hmm. is actually able to be a better mother. Yeah. To have more resources, to have more energy and to have them then turn around and say, thank you so much. You have literally saved my life. Yeah. That's the picture that we hold on to. Yeah. That's what the mission is. That's what the purpose is, is championing that person. And then with that focus, it's just you have to get out there. That's the challenge is get out there and help as many people that are going through that specific pain. The rest will take care of itself. Because, Alison, there's a whole body of knowledge that you have that a lot of people don't have. And it's time to get put that kind of cape on and get out there and stop being selfish and stop making it about you and actually make the impact, the impact that you're here to make. Yeah. And so, yeah, don't wait for this masterclass. Book it. 
Okay. Even if there's one person, even if there's one person that you can make an impact with, who gives a shit about money? Go and make the impact. Yeah. Go and help. Go and serve. The rest of it will take care of itself. I remember when I launched the Vietnam, there was five people in the room. What did I do? I just kept showing up every mm. single month, 15 years, every month, showing up, sharing a message. That's it. Just making an impact, creating a positive world one person at a time. That was it. Cool? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Matt. Awesome. My pleasure. All Thank right, you. quickly, maybe one or two more questions. Let me check the chat here. What's happening? Um, Carol says, so calm. Tricia says, oh, wow, that was awesome. Thank you, Alison. Yes, Alison, thank you so much for a great demonstration. Does anyone have any quick questions before we move on to the NLP Accelerator component? Carol, you look like you have a question here. <laughs> so unmute yourself. Uh, How can we help? I have a question. And my life seems to be constantly full of questions at the moment. So. <laughs> good. It's a good thing to question, right? Uh, even since I was a little girl, I think I've always questioned everything. So how can we help? How can we help? Your objective at the moment is to grow your coaching business. Yeah. Um, and really kind of the first jump that we're looking for is the 10K jump. Mm -hmm. What we're really looking for. Yeah, which at the we... moment I'm really far away from it. And I think the frustration has been getting into me. Mm -hmm. um, Who says you're far away from it? You could just be one deal away. That's a good point. Mm, one offer away. <laughs> I've been getting paralysis for sure. Yeah, or two offers away or three offers away. I mean, your package is 3K. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your offer? Memory. So, so yes. Yeah. Yes. 3K, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So you're three offers away. Yes. Mm hmm. So. If we got rid of all the other stuff and we focused on, okay, you just need to do deals. <laughs> you know what mm. your offering is. Mm. We need to work out, you know, an incredible deal. But more specifically, it's working out who would want that. Mm. It's like, what pain do you solve? This is what we've got to look at. This is for everyone in business right now. What is the pain that you solve? That's what people are wanting. They're wanting some form of pain to be solved. Mm. And if you can do that and you can do it really efficiently, I eat faster than they can do it themselves, they'll pay that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I so have no doubt that I can do that. Well, you've worked with clients, correct? Yes, for many years. So, And that's the thing. As a coach, I have no doubt of myself. It's like... It's, but in the past, I had clients coming to me. Well, now I'm the one having to go and get the clients. Mm -hmm. So tell me your greatest success working with I, a client. Oh, someone keeping their life, and I'm sure they're still alive until now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what was the pain? The overwhelm and, and the attachment to the substance. Mm -hmm. And so is is that a niche you want to go into, substance, overwhelm, pain? Yeah, the, the, the overwhelm and the way I've been talking about it when it comes to my offer, it has been more about like busy-minded doers, you know, that they have so many things in their heads. Um, a bit like having... A hundred tabs open in your computer. Okay. So if we look at overwhelm, what if you became the expert at helping people overcome overwhelm? Like what does overwhelm manifest into? Like what are the symptoms of overwhelm? Um, not being focused. Mm -hmm. um, feeling constant anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um not being able to be present for those who you love. Mm -hmm. Not being restful. So, Probably lack of sleep. So from a marketing point of view, mm. we need to find out of all of those, what's the biggest pain? What is the biggest pain out of all of that stuff? And we can look at how it manifests in crisis because that's where you want 
to work with people. They've hit crisis. They've hit threshold. They're the ones that are in the market. They can't do it. They can't fix it themselves. They've tried to fix it themselves. They've mm. hit that threshold. Now, you will do so much more, right, from a coaching point of view. What we're talking now is marketing. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about market. We're talking about marketing. We're talking about offers and we're talking about deal making. And this yeah. is that philosophy of give people what they think they want. They think they want to come overcome that pain, but we know that there is a deeper level of stuff mm -hmm. that's happening. But what we want to do when it comes to marketing is go fishing. And the fishing is, is that we need to look at, okay, where's the location? Mm -hmm. um, what type of fish and then what type of bait and timing and all of those things. The problem or the crisis is kind of the topic, is the bait, because you can fix that crisis, right? Yeah. The crisis is what gets attention. The news does this all the time. Mm -hmm. The news uses fear to be able to get attention. Because every signal goes through the basal ganglia, we know. Mm. So we use kind of almost like indirectly a similar process, which is what is that major crisis that we can fix? That if we trigger it and give a tip, we'll get attention. So we trigger the crisis, we give a tip. We trigger the crisis, we give an offer. Now, the offer, first phase, is time. Often. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, I know there are a lot of coaches out there, mm. but it's a relatively new industry. Most people don't know what it is. Mm. So that's often why we give a little bit of free time. I still give a little bit of free time, especially with troublemakers. I'll do a free breakout session initially. More more importantly, just to see if we're a good fit. Because yeah. I don't want to work with everybody. I, I want to see how they get into the session. I want to see, you know, the relationship that you have, we have during the session and then the behavior after the session. And that tells me, yep, they're a troublemaker. I'll allow them into the business breakout or they need some work before they can get into it, all of those things. So, you know, offering kind of something for free is almost like the bait, which is I will help you overcome this fear. Here is like a little bit of a roadmap, not fixing the problem, giving a tip, which then leads them on to the next session the next step. So, Carol, it's like you've got everything. It's just we've got to, we've got instead of adding things, mm -hmm. it's time to drop things and it's time to focus on marketing. Okay. And so we work out what is that one problem that there is a lot of pain associated to? Trigger it and go, I'm going to help you resolve it. Okay. Okay. And this is where an offer comes in. The offer, like so many coaches are like, oh, I've got a niche in this area, all mm. of that stuff. Forget niching. Forget it. Niching will come once you've got an established business and you're doing a quarter of a million dollars a year. Mm. That's And the niche doesn't come from you. The niche comes from the market. The market tells you what your niche is, not you. Yeah. But before niching, what we do is the offer. And the offer is what separates you from everyone. Now, how do we work out the offer? We've got to work out the pain, okay, or the problem. Mm -hmm. Then we work out the result. And then from, th from this, then we can work out an incredible offer. Okay. I really like that you said that it's time for me to drop things because, yes, I think I have a lot yep. of things going on and... Like Tony Robbins is a great example. Like everyone's trying to be Tony Robbins now with all of the multiple things that he did. But how did he start? He started curing phobias. That's how he started. Oh, that's right. And he went on Oprah. He did all that stuff, snake phobias, height phobias. So that was his kind of, you know, that was the problem that he fixed. Mm. And he chose that specific problem on purpose because it had wow factor. So he was able to show everyone the magic. And this is what I was saying to you, Alison. We need to show people the magic. That's what we need to do. We need to show people you fixing this stuff, whether it be on a video, demonstration, whatever it is, a masterclass. We need to show people the magic. Okay? Mm -hmm. So anxiety, overwhelm whatever it is, but look at how it manifests into a crisis. And what is that crisis? 
that if we trigger it, people will go, oh, my God, I'm in that crisis right now. I need help. Okay. Now, how do we do that? We go and test. We go and what? We go and test. Okay. So we look at your communities and we'll put a post out there. Who's going through this right now? Mm -hmm. Boom. All the people that respond, reach out to them, solve their problem, help them. Okay. Okay. Sound pretty good? Yes. It's good to start. Good. So the focus for you is what is that crisis problem or mm -hmm. that profitable problem that people will pay to resolve? Okay. Then go and trigger it and then focus on offer, an incredible offer, deal. That's all you need to do. Forget tech, forget all of that stuff. It's just that. What is that problem? And go back over your clients, your best clients, and work out why did they work with you? How did you find them? Why did they work with you? What was the trigger? What was the actual trigger where they went far out, I need you? There's gold there. Mm -hmm. I always, with troublemakers, I use this kind of metaphor of mining for gold, which is, um, imagine this, you you've, you remember those pans they used to have? You're sitting by the creek, you're panning for gold, <laughs> and you find a little gold nugget. Now, if you find a little gold nugget, you know there's gold there. So what you do is you get a big drill and you start drilling there. But mm. what a lot of people do with their business is they find a little bit of gold, then they go, and, then they go oh, I'm going to go to another stream. <laughs> and then they start the process again. They find a little bit of gold, oh, no, I've got to go to another stream. Whereas what we know, we need to stop and drill down because we now know there's gold there. So that's what I mean in your business. There is gold there. You, all the answers are in front of you. It's dropping things instead of adding things. Mm -hmm. Simplicity scales, complexity fails. Awesome. Thank you. Check. My pleasure. Let me check the chat quickly. Okay, Trisha, we're, we're going to get into eye patterns shortly. So you're jumping ahead, my dear. Um, the difference between a context reframe, content reframe, context reframe is um, situational. So an example might be, um, like, I, like I said in the course, is say you've got father-daughter. Daughter's not listening to father, speaking up, doing what she wants. Now, instead of switching that off, we'll look at, well, what other area of life is this actually really good, this behavior is really good for. Um, so that's the context, a different context. And we looked at social, right? Which is, well, isn't it really great that your daughter's such a leader that she will not go with the flow when everyone else is taking drugs, she'll say no. And so then we start to look at that behavior. Wow, that behavior is leadership, incredible. So in terms of the reframe, then, you know, father's now looking at daughter, oh, my God, you are a leader, <laughs> and now accepting her and listening to her in a different way and a different energy, because remember, it's a polarity. It's the energy of a relationship that typically triggers, um, and suddenly there's a new level of acceptance, so then acceptance comes back. So they both start listening to each other, accepting each other, a complete transformation. All change is a change in meaning. Versus a content reframe is more... You know, in looking at the content, looking at the story, oh, well, I'm, I'm not good enough or I can't have this um, or I can't make money. And a content reframe would be, oh, isn't it really exciting that you're about to learn, um, you know, really how to create abundance from nothing? Because that's what really happens, isn't it? When you're in that situation where you've got resistance and you can't make money, um, that teaches you how to be entrepreneurial, doesn't it? So that's more of a content reframe where we change the meaning. Now, remember, we use the lateral chunk questions, which is, you know, where else would this pattern be really, really good? Or we look at it, this situation, what's a silver lining? That's the process of reframing. So we have two types, content, which is we reframe the story. Context is where we look at another situation where that, you know, behavior, emotional state is really, really powerful. Okay, so that's where ecology starts to come into. Cool. Excellent. Um, strategy work, Linda, we'll get into strategy work. Strategy is just looking at the combination 
of internal representations that lead to a certain emotional state or behavior. So I might create a picture inside. I then might say something to myself. I might analyze something and then I'll feel something and then I'll make a decision or take action. It's looking at that internal strategy and then how we can make changes. Now, all the work that you do, every kind of um, intervention that you do is actually strategy work because you're interrupting the strategy, whether you're releasing a limiting belief, negative emotion, anchoring, whatever it is. Cool. Yeah, what I was really referring to there was the strategy that you deployed with Alison, which was using, I don't know, I lost count of the amount of things that we've been taught that you use, one after the other, bang, bang, bang. And then, yeah, that that's the strategy that I'm trying to get my head around. I'm, I feel like I can learn all this stuff and it's great, but the way you strung it together was where the magic was. Yeah. So remember the five principles of success in NLP, know your outcome. So the outcome in that situation was to go from paralysis to feeling safe, comfortable, excited. So I knew the outcome straight away because, again, it's the opposite of the problem. Then I just took action straight away. And the first thing that I did was I wanted to understand the problem. So we did some meta model and we noticed some violations in language, um, you know, around some deletion. And also loss performative as well, you know, like who's doing the uh, and um, lack of referential index as well in there as well. Um, and so we worked out that we told a little bit of a metaphor. We did a swish pattern. We did a future pace and we did some anchoring indirectly. Boom. <laughs> and you also so, did the one, I've forgotten what it's called, where you actually start you got her into trance at one point by starting to turn things around and say things that didn't make sense. Yes, yeah, so a Milton model. So yeah. we did some Milton okay. model, we right. did some metaphors, all of Meta down, Milton up. Yeah. Yep. And so think of the five principles of success. Know your outcome, take action, have sensory acuity. So you notice I'm always always testing. Okay, have behavioral flexibility. That's where I'm bringing in multiple interventions. And then I operate from a physiology and psychology of excellence, which is total certainty. We keep going until we get the outcome. Bringing this yep. technique, bringing this technique, bringing this technique until we get the outcome. Make sense? Cool. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, so this is our NLP um, accelerator catch up today, guys. And um, it's just a little bit of a recap on what we did this week um, in our NLP accelerator training. Okay, so it was a really exciting week. Um, we We looked at some really powerful processes. Reframing, which you probably just saw an example of. Um, reframing is where we reframe either the content, the story, or we reframe the context. And that's where we go, where we look at the situation and go, where is this emotional state or behavior? Where is it useful? What situation is it useful for? And we look at ecology because if we look at it kind of more in, you know, a, a contextual situation and we keep it in that context, we might be switching off behaviors that are really, really powerful, that have leadership tendencies, that communication it could create excellence in communication, could help our client actually get what they want. We looked at Milton model and we had some fun with Milton model this week. Remember Milton model, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> you have to do Milton model in trance. And Milton model is where we actually purposely put in deletions, distortions, and generalizations. Whereas meta model, we uncover deletion, distortions, and generalizations. Like we literally want to uncover what's not being said and what are the stories underneath. That metaphor of the iceberg, we know that language or the surface language is the tip of the iceberg. But underneath that is all of these stories, beliefs, memories. And so meta model is to uncover that, whereas Milton model is more a directionalization strategy where we want to directionalize the thinking. And so we will purposely induce trance. We will purposely be ambiguous. We will purposely put, we will purposely delete language, distort language and generalizing generalized language. So for an example would be if I was talking to someone um, and say it's around education and they were struggling around education, I might say something along the I was struggling around learning. I might say something like, well, it's a really good thing to, to learn, isn't it? And you are kind of learning many things right now, aren't you? Now, if you think about what I've just said, 
the person has to go inside and start thinking in a different way. So they're going to go and do like a hallucination and go, oh, yeah, I, I suppose it is a good thing to be learning. Yeah. And I am learning many things. Yes, actually, I'm learning this, 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 and this. And then we can move into things like double bind. So it's not for, it's not up to me to tell you to learn this or learn that. Learn in any way that you want, in any form that you want. Now, the presupposition there is, is that you're learning. No matter what you're doing, you're learning. Okay? And so, again, Milton model is very, very powerful to disrupt patterns. It's very, very powerful to induce trance, to get agreement. Um, it's very, very powerful in the context of redirectionalizing the internal representations. And whereas other interventions, we kind of like, you know, like associated work, you want to bust through the problem. Whereas Milton model, and then the extension of that is metaphors, we want to go around the problem. Okay? So we did Milton model. We then taught you how to construct metaphors. And metaphors are part of Milton model, aren't they? Because with a metaphor, we are we are chunking up. We're going into storyland. We're going into kind of the daydream area of the unconscious. And then we're going around the mountain. And that's what a story is, is where we kind of start off with the problem. And then we kind of end up in the solution. And we go on this journey. And because the unconscious mind takes things personally, we become the character. We go on the journey. And... With a metaphor, we can install new ideas, new insights, new learnings, new emotional states, new behaviors. That's the power of a metaphor. In my training, Influence Now, or our Speaker Accelerator, which is coming up, by the way, um, I teach you how to do this in like a stage format. And it's really, really powerful because all of a sudden you are able, you are able, sorry, to be in a situation where you can induce certain emotional states in the audience. Now, how powerful is that? Like, if I want the audience to feel alive, energized, could I tell a story about someone that was feeling exhausted and then suddenly they had this breakthrough and this new insight and then they tapped into all of this energy? And we've had that experience before, right? When you set a goal and you start to get that clarity and then all of a sudden you feel alive. Now, that simple kind of metaphor will pace, take the audience on a journey and induce those emotional states. Powerful. So metaphors are really awesome. Metaphors are great for someone that's really holding on to the problem really, really tight. It's an indirect format um, instead of kind of a direct approach. We used this model when it came to constructing metaphors. We look at what the problem is, okay? What is the presenting problem? What is the challenge? And really, that's all the information we need, because once we know the problem, we know what the solution is. The solution is the opposite of the problem. So that's what we do first. We work out what is the problem, and then we work out what is the solution. Then what we want to do is we want to chunk up, and you'll notice these questions, and then we want to go lateral, a lateral chunk. That's what a metaphor is. So we will chunk up um, by asking the question, where is it? <laughs> Here we go. What's this an example of? Or what is the intention? What is the purpose? Will chunk us up. Now, we can ask this internally, or we can, if we're doing this, we can ask this externally. Now, the activity that we did is we had, you know, a person that was the practitioner, the NLP practitioner. We had the person that had the problem, which was the client, and we had the observer. And so what we did is we worked out what the problem is, and we sent that person away. And then we said, okay, let's work together on constructing a story that will create some changes. So we worked out what the problem is. And then we asked the question, what is this problem an example of? And so um, one of the problems I think uh, was procrastination. And so what is this an example of? Stuck, being stuck. What is what, what's this? What else is this an example of? Avoidance. Hmm, okay, great. What else is this a, an example of? Maybe some fear. Then we went and chunked up to another level. What is another example of this? Or what are other examples of this? Now that is going to send us lateral. And so this is where we kind of get really creative when we start to think of stories and, and situations or biographies or personal stories, all of those things. So what are other examples of that? Well, it could be like I'm stuck at, you know, a red light and I really want to go. 
It could be that I really want to ask that person out, but I'm petrified. It could be I really want to start that business, but I'm scared I'm going to fail. And then we related it to, in and in our situation in um, LP Accelerator, we related it to actually Cinderella. And we looked at Cinderella in a different way, which was the, the stepsisters were wounds of the unconscious and the fairy godmother was the intuition. <laughs> and then we started off with you know, Cinderella really wanting to go to this dance and really wanting to get out there and have fun and meet new people and get a relationship. But there were these evil voices inside of her head saying, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. And with that, not enough time to be able to do it. But then something happened is the fairy godmother came along, which was really her intuition, and said, actually, you know what? You can have that relationship. Let's get you ready right now. Let's stop focusing on those little things. Let's get you ready. Let's focus on what you really, really want. And let's get you out there in that carriage and connecting and finding the love of your life. And that's what Cinderella did. She she put on her most beautiful dress. She got into the Uber <laughs> and she got out there and she went to the best club and she then connected and she found her soulmate. <laughs> and she left her handbag <laughs> so that uh, this person would have to call her. <laughs> so that's an example of a metaphor. Um, so we started off with the problem. We then kind of chunked up and then we worked out a story and then we brought the person back and said a moment ago, you were like, I am procrastinating, nothing's work, working. And then we shared that metaphor of Cinderella. Now the person is going to walk away going, what the hell did that mean? <laughs> um, but they're going to think about that, right? They're going to think about that for the next two weeks. And then all of a sudden with that, they're going to start to tap into new resources. Oh my God, I need to focus on bigger things. Why am I focused on the small rocks? I need to focus on the big rocks. I need to get out there and connect. Okay, or I need to get out there and bring a team in place and go and do the things that I've always wanted to do. So a metaphor is not necessarily going to solve the problem completely. It falls under the banner of those quick fix techniques. So that is part of our NLP Accelerator. Again, if you want to join us NLP Accelerator, please reach out to me. Um, it's a really, really powerful training. Next week, we are starting to look at strategy work. Uh, we're looking at anchoring, so how to be like the electrician and why your psychology. Really powerful sessions coming up. So that is our mini accelerator, guys. I hope you enjoyed it for today.